Hey guys, this is your fiery friend the Inferno Man here, and if you're into games, you're right where you need to be. But before we get into it, if you like the content that I put out there, I would greatly appreciate it if you hit me up with a like, or even better, subscribe to me. It really shows that people do care about my content. Now, if you have questions, comments, stuff you'd like to see played or discussed, you can at me on Twitter or chat directly with me as I stream two to three times a week on Twitch. A visual link for those are up on the screen right now, and I will have direct links in the details below. And for today's deck tech, we are going to be covering Colorless Ramp. Oh yeah, so if you're looking for a budget colorless deck that's looking to cast Ugin ASAP with a beatdown backup plan, this is exactly what we're going to do. Now as always, here's how we're going to break this down. First, we go over the creatures in the deck, then we will cover the non-creature spells, the land base if applicable, the sideboard, we will have a match with Sparky to give you an idea of what the deck is trying to do, and at the end, if you do like the deck, a way to upgrade it. But one more thing before we continue. Going forward from this point onward, deck techs are going to be a bit more streamlined now in comparison to my old ones because the assumption is by watching these videos, you should have some knowledge about the game and therefore the cards don't need to be spelled out all the time. Now that we have that established, of course, let's go ahead, let's jump into this. Now to begin, we have 14 creatures in the deck. We technically actually have some more creatures, but we will explain how those work in a, just a few moments. First to begin, we are using only this many because the main point of the deck is to ramp into Ugin, but in case of that plan falls apart, we have a very small package here of creatures that actually do provide a bit of a niche for the deck. Ornithopter and Ginger Brute are your early game creatures that either can help us chump block or provide a little bit of value in the terms, for example, here Ginger Brute allows you to sack it to gain two life if you tap it and pay two. Ornithopter may not really do anything because it doesn't have any damage. However, with our next two cards, Chief of the Foundry, it provides a plus one plus one to our cards here to give them a little bit more power and a little bit more of a threatening beatdown package. And Foundry Inspector itself really doesn't provide any value to make our creatures any bigger or more powerful, but they are cheaper to bring out, and this actually does help us out with the ramp package. Not to mention, also, both Chief of the Foundry and Foundry Inspector are also decent creatures in the sense that a 3-2 is actually pretty good clock, and a 2-3 also is a decent blocker. But that's pretty much going to be it for the package here. Let's actually talk about what you really, really want to do with this deck now. Of course, the real meat of this deck is going to be coming in the non-creature spell package. Let's go over this one at a time real quick. Guardian Idol for two mana is going to have you create small ramp along with Mindstone, also two mana, and adds one colorless. And the Hedron Archive, which is four mana, and allows you to add two colorless. Both the Mindstone and the Hedron Archive are good in the sense that either of these cards help you either get out your bigger stuff faster, or if you're drawing dead or flooding out on lands, you can then sack either one of these and then draw some cards out of it, which can help you maintain momentum for yourself. Guardian Idol is a little bit both a creature and a ramp. So as you see, again, you can either use it to add one colorless, or for two mana, you can make it a 2-2 artifact creature until end of turn. Remember how I just mentioned right now that small creature package that's the plan B of the deck? This kind of bridges that gap between both. So it's actually a pretty good card that synergizes well with what we're trying to do. To me, personally, Forsaken Monument is what holds this whole deck together. But since we are a budget deck, three of these is, I think, what we can afford to use. As you see, it's the colorless creatures get a plus two, plus two bonus from this legendary artifact. And every time you tap a permanent for a colorless mana, you get to add additional colorless mana. So everything that we can tap is going to ramp us much faster and makes it much easier to get to our Ugins. One copy of Karn the Great Creator is actually decent for a couple reasons. As you see, Karn allows us to turn off your opponent's activated abilities of artifacts that they control. The plus one can convert any one of our artifacts here into a creature, which becomes bigger depending on what its mana cost is. So if we can plus one a Forsaken Monument, you're going to get a very powerful 7-7. Seven, seven. Remember, again... I've converted mana cost, but the colorless creature gets plus two, plus two. So actually, it would stack on its own thing. I know, pretty nasty, isn't it? The minus two actually helps us kind of tick down and get something out of our sideboard, which we will talk about in just a second. But first, obviously, these two don't need an introduction. Little Ugin. I know, six mana is little. <laughs> Anyways, Ugin here helps us kind of with pseudo card draw, pseudo ramp, and pseudo removal. So it's a little bit of everything, but only two copies because, again, this is a budget deck. Our main focus is a full playset of Big Ugin. This is what, again, the whole point of the deck is trying to do. Use these cards to ramp, get to Big Ugin, wipe their board, stabilize, and close out the game. But that's basically what the main deck is trying to do. 
I just mentioned yes again that Karn is also minus two ability helps us get something out of the sideboard. So let's go actually go over our sideboard real briefly before we cover the lands because the lands are going to be a little complicated. Now going over specifically what Karn's minus two is. Karn's minus two, as you can see right here, it allows you to reveal an artifact card you own from outside the game, which basically in the terms of magic is your sideboard. So as for what our single copy of Karn can pull out, let's actually cover that real quick. So Meteor Golem, God Pharaoh Statue, Weathered Runestone, Dampening Sphere, Soul Guide Lantern, Fountain of Renewal, and Colossus Hammer. Notice that our sideboard that I've designed for us is half of a toolbox and half of an actual sideboard, which I'll explain in just a second. But first off, the catch-all Meteor Golem spot removal. It's expensive, but considering how quickly we can ramp, it's actually not as expensive as you think for seven mana. God Pharaoh Statue, of course, is just to hose out certain decks that try to cast multiple spells in a turn by making them cost more. And at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life, which is actually pretty nice, very annoying, and it also can put a small but still threatening clock on our opponent. Weather Runestone is mostly here just to prevent our opponent from doing any kind of library shenanigans. Sometimes it's helpful for the graveyards, but we actually have a graveyard specific card, which is the Soul Guide Lantern. And helping to exile certain graveyards, graveyard hate is not really that big anymore now that a certain card is out of the format, which we will talk about in another video. But otherwise, still good to have a little bit of redundancy there. Dampening Sphere is just to make sure that our opponent doesn't try to go off with certain big ramp spells or creatures that encourage ramp so this will hose that mana fountain of renewal mostly here just to give us a small amount of life gain it may not seem like it's that big to get only one life at the beginning of your upkeep but you never know where that one life could mean the difference between dying on one turn and surviving one more turn to get out your possible win condition and yes, for the memes, I added in myself Colossus Hammer. Even though this deck is probably never going to have to cast this, the most hilarious thing is possible is utilizing the ramp to attach the hammer onto, say, your Ginger Brute. Oh man, if I can actually get that, I will gladly show it to you guys in a highlight in the future. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for Karn as to what it can get out. As far as the regular part of the deck in terms of trying to get out more conventional cards... If we're having certain issues with certain matches, with specifically creatures, we have three copies of Blood Chief's Thirst, three copies of Heartless Act, and for control decks, Thought Distortion. You'll notice that these cards actually have black mana, so I'm sorry to say this is not true colorless, but the only reason for that is because we're actually a budget deck. I'll explain how we can cast our removal in just a second. So let's, with that, go to our land base. Normally, the land bases for me don't take no more than a minute, but considering this is colorless, there's a couple things. First off, the advantage of a colorless deck is you can utilize a lot of utility lands that normally you don't get to use because you need to focus more of your resources on actually having specific colors. But because of how this deck works, we actually can use a lot of interesting stuff. Zolfrin Void, for example, helps us fix our next draw with Scry. Radiant Fountain helps us stabilize with two life gain. Mirrodin's Core, Ether Hub, Infinite Deadlands are the cards that are going to help us fix our color for black so we can cast some of those removal spells if we need to pull those out of the sideboard. So if you're case you're wondering, that's how we actually do it with this deck. Not too often you're ever going to utilize that secondary ability otherwise of the Deadlands. Same thing, the Ether Hub, the otherwise the energy does absolutely nothing for you. And of course, the Mirrodin, you're going to have to actually time when to put a charge counter on it. So just be mindful of this if you're going to utilize these for actually fixing certain colors. Inner Planner Beacon helps us get gain some life. You're otherwise never going to have to use that secondary ability. Emergent Zone is actually interesting. You may have some instances where having to flash in one of our creatures, flashing in an artifact, is going to be extremely critical to ensure that either we can either play around a counter spell or just make sure that we can get something out that'll prevent us from dying on a certain turn. Buried Ruin just helps us maintain stability in the sense that its secondary ability is very helpful for this deck. By being able to pull out one of our artifact cards back from the graveyard to our hand allows us to either refuel with, say, maybe the Hedron Archive, or we can bring back one of our chump blockers just for another turn to ensure that we can still stabilize. But that's pretty much going to be it for the land package, all right? 
And otherwise, I got nothing else for you guys except you know what time it is now. Oh yeah, it is time to have a match with Sparky. So let's go ahead, let's have that. Oh yes, so we are doing ramp without colors. Who needs colors? Psh, colors just hold everything back. Okay, let's look at our hand right now. Okay, so again, your basic plan is to just get all your mana out as fast as possible and try to get to Ugin. I know, I know, some of you guys are probably just going to roll your eyes like, oh, Ugin, you're only just playing Ugin because Uro's not a thing anymore. Eh, you may be right, but hey, again, again, let's just have some fun. Even if we can't get to Ugin, remember again, plan B is just to beat them down with our colorless creatures. Let's just keep this hand. Ginger Brutes. Get in a couple beats against Sparky there. And again, while you're trying to do this, we also have Karn, which can help us pull out something out of our sideboard as a toolbox. Okay, cool. Another Hedron Archive. All right, Sparky is going to be trying to swing at us right now. Going all aggro, that's fine. Not a big deal here. The Zalfrin Void now helps us... Oh, jeez. Oh, I want the monument. The monument here would be so nice, but ugh, we have to drop it. I'm sorry, guys. Not what I want to do right now. We can also get Karn if we also need to. This really kind of depends on what your opponent is trying to do. In this case, because Sparky is being aggro, and if you normally had an aggro individual, you probably want to get down Ugin ASAP just to wipe the board and stabilize. So in this instance, we are going to Hedron Archive. We're at 14 right now. Instances like this where you're starting to get a little low on life. Ginger Brute here also can be cracked for life. So don't be afraid to do that if you absolutely need to. All right, Sparky is going wider. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> All out attack? Yep. Mm. Are we going to make it in time? Okay, Radiant Fountain actually will keep us alive a little bit longer, but not by much. Can we survive the next hit? That's the question here. Okay. All right, so we have enough... Hmm... We're going to pass, actually. So let's see what we have on. We have to fight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they have exaxes. <laughs> we have to sponge one hit. But here's again the good news. This is the instance I was just talking about. So Ginger Brood blocking here. But now we crack it, gain some life, prevent the blocking. This allows us to sponge one hit here. Okay. So finally, here comes Big Bad Ugin. Normally, if you're playing against a regular opponent, <laughs> this is where they concede. But now Ugin is the reason why we did all this. Even though we had a lot of cheap ramp, Ugin now wipes the board. Let's make sure we actually wipe correctly here. So just don't forget to, what is your converted mana cost here? The highest is three from two creatures. All right, minus Treus. That's three, just in case you guys don't know. All right, entire board's wiped. Whew, that was too close. <laughs> Uh, what's the last card, Sparky? Is that a creature? It is. It is indeed. But we're now in a really good spot. So at this point, you're kind of now free to do what you please. So let's go ahead. Karn, gain some life. Let's tick up Ugin for three damage. Hit that 10 street. Yes, we can go to face, but this is actually going to be the more fun part. This is where you actually want to just now go nuts. Okay, Karn. Let's get something out of the sideboard. All right, so what's going to help us stabilize? So remember, half of your sideboard is removal, but the other half is just your actual your actual cards that will help you gain victory. So in this case, what helps us out here? We need to close out this game. Let's get God Pharaoh Statue. We can't do anything right now with it, so we're just going to pass. But we now are stable, and you can do some pretty dirty things here. You can also take down Karn again if we really need to. So here's what we're going to do with this. Let's God Pharaoh's statue. This now puts a massive tax on our opponent. But I don't think <laughs> Sparky's going to do much. So bring alive the Guardian Idol because reasons. Let's start bolting their face for three damage. They're down to 13. Fountain of Renewal. So now we are fully stable. Go attacking with the Guardian Idol. Down to 11. Down to 10. <laughs> And Sparky, I think you've got no other way to get out of the situation. So put down the Ether Hub, hit them for three. Bam. Tick up. God Pharaoh Statue is a good thing. Now you got a 6 6. <laughs> oh, 
this is this is bad. I feel bad bullying Sparky like this, but Sparky is such a good sport. And and again, in this instance, I mean, we don't need to, but you can also sack the Heatron Archives if you need to, sack your Fountain of Renewals if you need to draw cards, but just be mindful of when you do it. And it, obviously in this instance, we don't need it anymore. So you know what? Sack one. Because why not? Ooh, Foundry Inspector. This would have been good earlier, but that's okay. We've already made it to where we want to be. In any case... Let's just finish off Sparky and the suffering. But there you go. Colorless ramp. As cheap as you can make it. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. All right. Let's talk upgrades. Now, as far as upgrades to the deck, this also really is going to be a bit more trickier. And you're going to want to have probably a little bit more knowledge as to how you want your deck to go forward. If you want to focus more on having a creature package, Stone Coil Serpent could be decent. But more realistically, you might be better off utilizing Crawling Barons and Mobilized District. Since these are actually lands that can become creatures, they are much harder for your opponent to remove when they go back to becoming lands at the end of a turn. Speaking of lands, Inventor's Fair will help you gain some life. Spire of Industry is also a decent card here. Having to pay one life is something that you probably will never have to do unless if you really do need to cast a black, one of your black cards in a pinch. And Blast Zone is going to be a much more better way of being able to remove certain things against your opponent. This may also blow up some of your stuff. So be very mindful of what you blow up when you need to use Blast Zone. As far as more specific niche items, Sorcerer Spyglass is always usually used against certain cards that you may have trouble dealing with. Most specifically Planeswalkers, considering that colorless decks really have a hard time otherwise with removal unless if they splash for something else. Maze Mind's Tome is going to be great for you to help fix your draws. You might want to probably pull out some of your creatures just to utilize this if you want to focus more on that versus actually having creatures for a beatdown. But if you do want to go for a more creature beatdown package, besides the Mobilized District and the Crawling Barons, consider in the sideboard Shadow Sphere, and possibly in the main deck you could get rid of one of your other creatures, most likely your Ornithopter for a Stone Coil Serpent. At nothing else, Stone Coil Serpent actually does scale up depending on where it is played in the game. And Shadow Sphere just gives you something to put on a creature better than the Colossus Hammer that can give you both Trample and Lifelink, which is going to be much more relevant in order to maintain stabilization. Not to mention that ability of its where it permanents your opponent control, lose Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn, can be great for those moments where you need to remove something with one of, say, your black removal spells. That's going to be it for the colorless upgrades. But if you really care about color splashing, this is actually where I encourage you as a viewer and as a player to kind of experiment. There are many versions. For example, if you go into blue, you have access to counter spells. If you want to go back into black, you have more better removal if you actually are willing to invest into more rare wild cards out there. And there you have it, everyone. That is Colorless Ramp for you. So what do you think? Is this actually a deck that you've enjoyed, but you just had trouble figuring out what's the best, most budget way to get into this deck? There is a lot of possibilities and upgrades you can utilize with this deck with the base package that I provided for you. So don't be afraid to actually experiment and see what you prefer. Also, you guys let me know in the comments. Do you prefer me actually having shorter deck techs, or would you rather I go back to discussing every single card in detail? It's up to you guys out there. I've been told that actually it's better to streamline them, but maybe there are some of you out there that disagree and would prefer me to actually go over every single card and every single line of text. Otherwise, that's all I got for you guys for this one. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if I helped you out. You learned something, or at least I entertained you. And don't forget that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure, everyone, to... Burn bright. Later.